Good afternoon, my turtle ducks. Just in time for tea. Please help yourself. I've got sugar and honey and cream or lemon, and we've got jam and butter for the tea cookies. Today, I'd like to discuss boundaries. I'll be paraphrasing a lot from Casey Davis, an LPC and TikTok creator, and I'll link her channel in the description below. I don't know about you, my dear turtle ducks, but I have struggled with setting and maintaining appropriate boundaries in just about every aspect of my life. This has made meeting and maintaining expectations of me both difficult and stressful. As a result, I have given over to some very unhealthy behaviors and been prone to reacting rather than responding. I hope you can learn from my mistakes. Now, let's start with boundaries. Ms. Davis has a very useful framework for viewing boundaries that I believe makes creating and holding boundaries easier and actionable. According to Ms. Davis, a boundary is exclusively focused on our own behavior. It is an expectation we set for ourselves about how we respond when or if that boundary is breached. So, what would that look like in practice? When we set a boundary such as, I don't allow people to speak to me in such a manner, the follow-up to that is not to tell people not to talk to you that way, but to decide how you will respond. In this case, the boundary, I don't allow people to speak to me in such a manner, leads to the response, if people speak to me in such a manner, I will leave the conversation. This can translate to specifying your boundary as well. Please do not speak to me in that way, or I will not continue this conversation. Remember, we are practicing being polite, but firm. Sometimes people do or say things without knowing they've crossed a boundary, so it's good to let them know before simply walking off or closing a chat. There are many ways to respond to an overstepped boundary. The key part is to know where your boundaries are, what sort of things you are and are not willing to tolerate, and how you will respond. If you aren't willing to follow through with the consequence of a boundary, then it isn't a boundary. So make sure whatever your response is, it's something you're willing to follow through on. Of course, boundaries aren't exclusively conversational or emotional. Most of us have some physical boundaries as well. For example, your dear Baba is not a very touchy person. I don't particularly care for handshakes or hugs, and most people are a bit too enthusiastic with their high fives for me. I preempt most of my discomfort with clothing and by offering a polite bow in place of a handshake in all casual situations and in some semi-professional ones. For people who are huggers, I tend to put more than a full step distance between us, so they are more likely to remember to ask first. However, not everyone was raised with the ideas of bodily autonomy for some or all circumstances. In these cases, we may have to interrupt a hug either by physically moving from the path or by raising our hands to forestall. In these cases, it's good to offer an alternative suggestion so that the hugger may adjust their expectations going forward. Of course, it's not necessary to do so, but I find a redirection much easier than a full stop. As such, we may say something like, I'm not really a touchy person. Can we do X instead? And then you can offer an alternative like high fives, fists, or elbow bumps. While the feelings of other people are not our responsibility, if we are trying to foster a friendly relationship, some compromise, so long as it is not too uncomfortable, can greatly aid that goal. In our current world, we interact with a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis. Social media has pushed us to the limits of our capabilities memorizing people and their different quirks. As a result, it isn't uncommon to forget even very important things about someone you don't interact with regularly. As long as it's not a malicious persistence, such as someone purposely trying to overstep your boundary, it should be expected that some people will just default to their most natural behavior and may need reminding that you don't wish to be treated that way. Gentle reminders can be as simple as raising your hand or elbow for an alternative physical contact or reminding someone that your time is limited. While this is a much smaller group, on very rare occasions, you will encounter people who are carelessly negligent or purposefully malicious. 
In these cases, it may be necessary to be a bit louder about your boundaries, or bring up repeated transgressions to a peer group or authorities, such as HR or management. Remember to document everything. Send emails following up on in-person or over-the-phone conversations. While we never want to assume the worst, it is better to be prepared. Remember, communication is key. I hope you found this introductory video helpful. If you have any specific questions related to this or other etiquette, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram or Telenem, and I will attempt to help. Next time, we'll discuss appropriate behaviors. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, be kind, my little turtle ducks, to others and to yourselves.